She was at home asleep in her house one night when Ted Bundy broke in and he beat her with a, a metal pole and he raped her and, and she was in a really terrible state. Many people think this is something that just kind of came out of the blue, but I would say absolutely not, it didn't. I think this was an attack that was built up to. We often find with offenders, there's some behavior before they get to the point of, of raping and, and attacking people. And in Ted Bundy's case, this was voyeurism. So he had a history of peeping through women's windows and watching them get undressed. And it's something that gradually builds and it's not enough for him. And he ratchets it up to the next level. The violent assault left the young woman unconscious for 10 days. She sustained injuries from the blows to the head that will cause brain damage and brain swelling. And when he sexually assaulted her with a metal bar, that caused damage to her internal organs. And she was left permanently altered by those injuries. Seattle, Washington, February 1974. It was here that 27-year-old Ted Bundy attacked again and turned from rapist to killer. It's no coincidence that she's a university student who he sees as privileged, who he sees as undeserving, whereas he's somebody who's really hard done by. And it is that constant jealousy, that constant underlying feeling of shame that drives a lot of his violence. Bundy's chosen target was a 21-year-old University of Washington student called Linda. He broke into her room. He very severely attacks her. He really does bash her, her skull when he carries out the, the assault on her. She doesn't survive the attack. That night, after he'd attacked and killed Linda, Bundy moved her away from the campus. He dumped her body in the dense woods of Taylor Mountain Forest, a 30-minute drive from the university. It's very important that he maintains control over the victims, even after he's killed them. So he doesn't just leave them where they are. He wants to be able to know where they are. He wants to have control over them. So he chooses a local beauty spot, Taylor Mountain. It's a place that people generally go to enjoy. But for him, it, it really is a macabre dump site. Linda's body was found a year later in 1975. Her death marked the start of a furious spate of killings. At this time, Bundy quit law school in Tacoma after just six months. He returned to Washington, not as a student, but as a predator. He would lure women over to his car, saying that he needed their assistance with something. And he'd often be wearing a sling to, to make it appear that he'd injured himself. And he was good looking, he was charming, he was respectable. Bundy's trademark VW Beetle became his favorite method for abducting women before taking them to a remote spot to attack them. When he hit, it was like a shark grabbing its prey. Bam! He'd use a blunt object to bludgeon his victims and then he'd strangle them. After eight aggravated murders of young women in the first half of 1974, a rate of more than one a month, fear spread across the Pacific Northwest. I think Ted Bundy enjoys the feelings of power. He enjoys the feelings of control. So you start to see the, the attacks get closer together because he's having to escalate his offending to get that same feeling of power. We know with psychopaths like Ted Bundy, they're prone to boredom, so they will start to mix it up a bit and offend in different ways. Then in the summer of that year, Bundy changed his MO. He now decided to attack in broad daylight. On July the 14th at Lake Sammamish State Park, just over 15 miles southeast of the University of Washington, Bundy attacked two young women, 23-year-old Janice and 19-year-old Denise. Denise was last seen entering a public restroom in the park. There are some witnesses to these crimes and that there's one common denominator, and that seems to be a man called Ted who drives a VW Beetle. So that begins to narrow the field a little. Bundy later said that he kidnapped both women from the state park within a few hours of each other. He raped them and made one watch as he murdered the other.